In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of inductance. And in this particular example, the idea of self-inductance. We have here a diagram of a coil of wire. And when a current passes through this coil, it has a property called inductance. And inductance, we give a letter L, and it's measured in a unit called Henry's, or H for short. We can think of inductance as a measure of the coil's ability to build up magnetic energy. We can think of electromagnets and electric motors, all as examples of inductors. They all consist of coils of wire that build up a magnetic field when current passes through them. But for this to happen, the coil needs to have inductance, and we can calculate the inductance of a coil using the following formula. Uh, L equals K mu naught n squared a all over lc. Let's have a look at this formula in a little bit more detail. First of all, k is something called the relative permeability, and it's a term that we're going to come back to in a little bit more detail later on. But secondly, mu naught is something called the permeability of free space. It sounds like quite a confusing term, but thankfully for us, it's a constant term. And what I mean by that is it's given by this value 1.257 times 10 to the minus 6. Um, that's a constant. So whenever this mu naught crops up in our equation, we know just to put this number in, 1.257 times 10 to the minus 6. Thirdly, we have n squared, and we know that n is the number of turns of the coil. So in this case, my coil has 500 turns. Finally, A is given by the cross-sectional area of my coil. On the bottom, LC is the length of the coil. And we know that in my example here, the length of the coil is 15 centimeters. So first of all, let's have a go at calculating the inductance of the coil in my example here. So we can say that L equals K. Well, we said that we were going to talk a bit more about K, the relative permeability, later on in the video. For now, I'm just going to say that K equals 1. But our second term, mu naught, we said was 1.257 times 10 to the minus 6. N squared is going to be 500 squared. And finally, A, the cross-sectional area. So the area of the cross-sectional, or the end of my coil here. Well, we don't know the area, but we do know that its diameter is 10 millimeters, or 0 0.01 meters. We also know that the formula for the area of a circle, which we're assuming that this cross-section is here, is pi r squared. And the radius is half of the diameter, so 5 millimetres, or 0 0.005 metres. So in my formula here, what I'm going to say for the area is pi times the radius, which is 0 0.005 squared. And then not forgetting that this whole fraction here is over LC, the length of my coil, which in this case is 15 centimetres. In metres, that's 0 0.15. And when I calculate all of this, I come out with the following answer. I get 1.6454 times 10 to the minus 4 Henry's, because it's an inductance that I've calculated there. Now, this is a slightly awkward number. 10 to the minus 4 doesn't give us any of our standard prefixes. What I could say is that that's the same as 164.54 times 10 to the minus 6 Henry's. And I know that 10 to the minus 6 gives us our standard prefix of micro. So I could say 164.54 micro Henry's for my inductance there. So we've said that because my coil has an inductance, it's able to build up magnetic energy. 
and so we can calculate that energy by using the following formula. E for energy is L I squared over 2. So that's the inductance multiplied by the current squared over 2. Well, for example's sake, let's say that I have a current of 3 amps that passes through my coil here. And we'll calculate the amount of energy that results in my coil because of that. So using my formula here, we know that L, the inductance, we've just calculated as 164.54 microhenries, or 164.54 times 10 to the minus 6, multiplied by our current, 3, but remember my current's been squared, so that's 3 squared, all over 2. And calculating that gives me an answer of 7.404 times 10 to the minus 4 joules. Now 10 to the minus 4 doesn't correspond with one of our standard prefixes. And so what we can do is we can adjust this rather than saying 7.404 times 10 to the minus 4, we could say 740 0.4 times 10 to the minus 6 joules and we know that 10 to the minus 6 does correspond with one of our standard prefixes uh, for micro so we can say 740.4 micro joules at this point let's return to our original formula for inductance and we said that inductance is equal to k mu naught n squared a over LC. And one thing that we glossed over initially was this term K, the relative permeability. And in our original formula, we just left this as 1. The reason we did so is because the relative permeability relates to the core of the inductor. If I have in this case no core, or what we call an air core, K stays as 1. If, however, I have a material that I use as a core, for instance, an iron core that runs through the centre of my, uh, my coil here, then K is no longer 1 because I have a material here which has what's called a relative permeability and this affects the result. In this case, let's say that my iron core has a relative permeability of 515. So I'll say here that K equals 515. Let's see first of all how that affects the inductance and then how that affects the energy built up by my inductor. So using my same formula here, I can say that K is 515 multiplied by mu naught and we said that mu naught is 1.257 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by n squared, the number of turns, which is 500 squared, multiplied by the area, which we said we would use the radius, um, multiplied by pi, so pi times the radius 0 0.005 squared, all over the length of the coil, which we said was 0.15 metres, or 15 centimetres. And when I calculate this now, I get an answer of 84.74 times 10 to the minus 3 henrys. And we know that 10 to the minus 3 corresponds with our standard prefix for milli. So I could say 84.74 milli henrys. Finally, we can also calculate the energy in my inductor here. We can say that the energy E is equal to L I squared over 2. And we know in this case that L is 84.74 times 10 to the minus 3 times I squared. And let's say 
for the purpose of my example, I have this same current of three amps, which is going through my inductor. So that's three squared in my formula. All divided by two. And that gives me an answer of 381.33 times 10 to the minus 3 joules. Or I could say 381.33 millijoules. So I hope this video has been useful. First of all, on the concept of self-inductance and how a coil of wire has an inductive property. And then how we can calculate the magnetic energy built up in an inductive coil.